Alright guys, Tad Crow back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far and Rostermania just hit the stratosphere, ladies and gentlemen. Things are officially kicking off out of control. Crim6 dropped from the Dallas Empire. What is even going on? What's next for him? What's next for the Dallas Empire themselves? This was not something I expected at all. Very much intrigued to hear your perspective on all this in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Really, if the channel, thank you very much indeed for doing that. No better time to hit that big red button than right about now. Method is like, what is even going on? It's an honestly crazy. This is like something I was not expecting by any means. I thought there was going to be some crazy changes. This is not one of them I expected. Many implications that we can dive into right here. The thing that I thought was going to be the main story of the day was Paris Legion pretty much getting rid of everyone. Scrap says this, free agent going into the new season. Any teams want to message, get something going and are willing to move anywhere. Don't mind who I'm playing with, just want to play with winners of course. Not talking about our potential for content right here. Last season we saw Wusk and his twin brother go down that route after, you know, the difficulties of going from 5v5 to 4v4 and not getting a spot. Scraps managed to snag one on the Paris Legion. Whether that'll be the case next year, who really knows, honestly. It's going to be difficult for a lot of these guys that are on these struggling squads. Aqua, one of those players, officially out of a repetitive cycle. Been winning, you know, taking care of myself more than ever. Free agent going into Vanguards. Any challenges willing to grind it, let's get it. So I guess kind of hoping that he might get a Pro League spot, but thinking it might be somewhat doubtful given the situation as it has transpired. They go on to say this as well. Thought it was funny that Chrome pointed out they put this on their, well, on their Twitter page, Paris Legion. They put it on their Paris Legion Instagram and also on their Paris Eternal, which is the Overwatch team. They put it on their Instagram as well. No idea whether that was intended, to be honest. No one even seems to know with Paris. But um, yeah, thanks to each and every player who played under the Legion banner for 2021. A tough season. Deeply appreciate the commitment given the circumstances. We wish them the very best in all their future endeavours. So who knows what goes on with this team happening for us? Because of course, Paris aren't saying like, look, we'll be back stronger next year with a new team. They're just like, yeah, yeah, we've released all our team. And um, okay, like at the same time, there's been a lot of talk the last few days about, okay, could Cloud9 come into the mix? Could potentially potentially E United come into the mix and try and buy out one of these spots. There seems to be interest if there's any organisation in the league right now which uh, well, I'd give the highest percentage chance to actually selling their spots. I guess it would be the Paris Legion. We will see what happens but uh, yeah, difficult future lies ahead I imagine for these players but some of them may well find a spot whether it's on a starting team or on a bench and oh, one of those also looking for that opportunity is Douglas Centre Martin. As he says, sued right here back on the main stage. This is that complexity team during the World War 2 days. Of, I mean, you can see Dash, you can see Ricky. I think it was like Blast as well and Doug or something like that playing the Red reserve guys as it was at the time so you can see scraps right here of course so yeah pretty funny stuff but uh, yeah Doug Sensor Martin trying to make it work and maybe one of his teammates next year could be Ian Crib's exporter don't think that's gonna happen this came out and I was absolutely mind blown restricted free agent for 2022 says Ian Crib's exporter none like that then um well the greatest player of all time a lot of people would consider understandably so the winningest player of all time and no doubt that is statistically a fact and um, probably the guy who knows how to win better than any other player in the quality landscape he's get dropped from the Dallas Empire the squad that are honestly it wasn't the worst season in the world for them but um, obviously they want better than you know top twos top threes top fours but last season on the Dallas Empire in Modern Warfare won the entire world championship so remarkable to see this says to me effectively that Shotzi was like yeah I don't want to team with Krimsix anymore because um, fact of the matter is if you've got to choose one player I thought personally they would keep Krim and Shotzi for sure and they would see what else happens they might try and get close to back as was rumoured in the middle of the season they might keep early they might keep Vivid I'm not really sure what they were planning to do there but I thought that Krimsix and Shotzi would probably stay as a duo but if you had to choose between one of the two, I guess you choose Shotzi, right? Like he's the next sub, he's the talent you want to build around for the next, like, you know, five, ten years, or even knows how long this guy can potentially go. And uh, Crimson, of course, at the latter end of his career is, you know, if you had to make a choice between the two, and maybe Shotzi's like, look, I don't want to really play with Crim anymore, then um, he's the one out the door. Remarkable to think about. So, of course, there's so many questions that come out of this straight away. And immediately people thought, okay, it's good just trolling, but no. Dallas Empire, to date, we bid farewell to the three time world champion, the winningest player of all time. Thank you to bringing home a world championship to Dallas. Crem6, absolute legends. Here he is right here this season. And um, well, I, honestly, like the Hook video, if that was going to be great, then uh, there could be some crazy stuff coming out from Crem6 over these coming days and weeks, I'm sure, when it, everything gets determined as to what his future is going to be and what the future of Dallas is going to be. And um, yeah, I can imagine whenever Crim plays Dallas next year, it's going to be spicy. There's no doubt about that one. Now, Vivid comes out and says the same thing. So very interesting to me. Will, you know, will Crim and Vivid team up for next year? Like what's going to go on there? I don't really know. It's so tough to call. Restricted free agent going into the 
like excited. Like, nothing but love for Dallas Empire bringing me on for the second half of the year. Looking forward to the future, says Vivitar. He was honestly pretty damn good for this team, but um, maybe Shotzi is just making the calls now, right? And he likes Illy. He wants to play with him going forwards, and that they're looking for two, I suppose. And of course, these guys now have to find a new opportunity elsewhere. Remarkable to think about. Dallas Empire confirmed the same thing just a few minutes later as well. So um, all of a sudden, we've got two massive free agents on the market, especially one of them in Crib6 that I was not expecting to be the case. Hastro goes on to say, yeah, we're switching up a bit for 2022. I mean, switching up a bit. Like, this seems like a pretty substantial change. Dropping your in-game leader and uh, greatest player of all time in Crib6. Didn't want to delay or risk opportunities. Kind of what they did last year with Clayster, right? When it was going 5v5 to 4v4, they let him be known that he was out of the team pretty much immediately so he can find the opportunities. Crim special, everyone knows that. Vivid got his start and proved he has what it takes. Deeply, you know, going to deeply miss them on the Empire, but I guess um, if Shotzi wanted it to happen, that's what's going to happen. Even though we finished first and third in the past two CDL World Championships, can't be become complacent in fixing issues regarding our team dynamic. No move is certain to work out. Really hope this one does, as I cared pretty deeply for those guys. So I guess Rabo, you know, I guess Shotzi and Illy, whatever they thought was uh, the right thing to do, they had a discussion. They thought, okay, moving Crim6 and, and Vivid out of the team is the way to fix their, well, recurring issues, I guess, with their team dynamic as is being described right here. So, the then question comes out, Aix is pretty mind blown about it, and understandably so, where does Crim6 go next? And then we can, of course, discuss who is actually going to replace him. I think that's the question we'll have to raise first. Octane comes back in the reply and says, what in the hell? So, um, it, I mean, yeah, it'd be kind of funny if Octane says this and then just swoops into the Dallas Empire to play with shot seekers. To be fair, I'm pretty sure Octane said he had the opportunity to team on Dallas, maybe alongside Crim6, and, um, and uh, well, Shotzi and Illy at the start of the Modern Warfare season. But uh, that obviously didn't go through. He wasn't sure that, um, you know, Illy was going to be ready or Shotzi was going to be ready. I'm not really sure which way it went, but could it be kind of funny if he hopped in there now? Don't think that's going to happen, though. I imagine Octane to Thieves is uh, the more likely option. So he's like, okay, what do you do with the Dallas Empire? Does Clayster come back in there from New York? To me, that would be really strange if Clayster and Crim6 kind of did a swap, but maybe Shotzi's like, look, I preferred Clay style of leadership. Let's let's get him back in the team instead. Or are we thinking a guy like Slasher could uh, well step into this team because Slasher's got to find somewhere. We don't know if he's going to be on the Thieves next year. Lots of talk about, okay, could he go to New York? What's going to go there? Like a Clayster. I was honestly thinking Clayster might go to Dallas alongside Crim and they might try and make that work in a 4v4 environment again. But uh, Slasher is, is you know, certainly in consideration. So I don't even know what happens there, but I guess you need a main AR to come into that team. You've got Shotzi and Illy still there. So I guess you need another SMG type player if you wanted to go down that route. I don't know who they're going to get. Maybe they even try and get Hook back right and reform, like, um, and reform Zio, I guess, the, the trio that they had before. But uh, maybe Crim6, they thought, was the issue with that. So they bring you, like, a different AR. I don't even know what they're going to try anymore. But um, this is uh, so much up in the air. Very, uh, call me off guard, to be honest, this. And uh, really does, this is the type of thing that throws a massive spanner in the works of Ostromania. Like, a free agent like Crim6 on the market, it's kind of like when who came on the market last year from the Dallas Empire, or if one of the Optic guys get dropped. It's like, all of a sudden, that throws, like, such a cascade of effects through the rest of the teams. Because if Crim6 is on the market, like, um, especially if you're one of these teams that hasn't necessarily had the, the best, uh, well, chances of getting over line and hasn't quite managed it a couple of times, like, uh, Crim6 is probably the guy you want to bring in. Like, he knows how to win. Every team he's on will, at the very least, be a contender at some point or another. So, um, it's something you've certainly got to consider if he obviously wants to come back and compete again, which I imagine he does. I'm sure revenge is on his mind right now. Yeah, well, hasn't tweeted much these last few days, so I kind of felt, well, felt like something might be up. Clayson says this, we back. Of course, this is the legendary Optics Rob with you and Parasite coming in back in 2014 so definitely some bait going on here on the timeline but uh, well this comes out from methods also along the same lines and as Octane says you know no wonder either that being Crim6 got drops it was to bring back the dynasty of this World War 2 team of Octane and Methods Crim6 and Skump which um, honestly had a really really good hard point record but weren't quite so good when it came down to the World Championship you guys may well remember that year so of course uh, well this is a video I actually saw a while ago after Champs I didn't share it at the time just because I thought it wasn't really relevant but now Crim6 has been dropped it may be more so relevant right and we can see right here this guy's walking by so you can see Crim6, you can see Skump having a chat after, well, falling out of the World Championship, both of them. So pretty remarkable to think about what could be happening here. Because, of course, that is next to the question. Where is Crim6 actually going to go for next year? Could he even potentially go back to Optic, right, and reunite with Skump? I know there's a lot of comments on the documentary I did of the, you know, the history of Skump and Crim6, which has uh, almost like, I think it has like two-thirds of a million views now. It's absolutely incredible if you guys haven't seen that quite as of yet. But, um, yeah, I, a lot of comments on that saying, yeah, that the, the end of the storyline would be perfect if they team up once again after all the drama with the last few seasons and then, um, you know, come back and win a world championship finally. And it's kind of funny because I've been saying the last few days that I feel like Optic missed the kind of discipline that Crim6 brought to that team. Now, whether actually it's Crim6 who comes back and brings that discipline, I, I doubt that's going to be the case. But it's still, it's a very big question where he actually will go. Subliners are dropping the eyes emoji. Lots of talk as well about uh, Florida Mutineers. Potentially, you could see a world maybe with Skies, Neptune. I mean, Crim6 comes in, like brings along Vivid or something.
thing, but he could go to a lot of different teams right now. There's a lot of squads that probably could require the services of a guy like Crimsakes, and um, maybe it's Crim and Clayster that do team up again, as it seemed like they wanted to this season, but not on the Dallas Empire, but instead on the New York Subliners. But um, look, I don't know. I don't know how to predict this anymore. What do you guys think down below? Because this honestly could go so many different directions. We've even got Jack Etienne from Cloud9 coming in the replies, hinting once again that they're making some sort of a return. And uh, honestly, like, who knows, right? Maybe a squad does get bought out this year, and therefore we see them build around a Crim6, right, and go down that route and see what he wants to play with and just build a squad from the top down from Crim6's perspective if um, if that's something they want to go for. I don't know how to call this one. It's um, it's, it's on you guys in the comments like, below to try and predict where this goes because it could go many different directions. Crim seems to like Vivid and appreciate him. Maybe they stick together. I mean, there's a limited number of, of good SMG players in the league. Vivid is certainly one of them, but it could another team, the likes of Los Angeles Thieves, do they need an SMG? Like, just, you know, I don't, I don't think Crim who could be teaming up, but who could go somewhere else? And then um, Vivid could go into LA Thieves as kind of their aggro sub. I don't know what they want to do, but um, this definitely throws a cat amongst the pigeons. And we've got this from the flag. Make it up and hashtag Greenwall. You know, Ian at Crimson Exporter back in the Optic jersey as he was for a few years during that dynasty period. Remarkable situation, no doubt. And um, you know, those still say from Gunners just wanted to finish off with a couple of things because that uh, roster mania is going crazy all across the park. And that Gunners, you know, tweeting out poggers and stuff. Who knows what this could even possibly refer to? But our season was in the replies for a lot of tweets yesterday that are within relation, I suppose, to Gunners, who's a good friend of his, no doubt. And um, yeah, drops the fire emoji in reply right here. And also, uh, well, says in reply to this tweet, which of course came out from the Seattle Surge a few days ago with regard to them dropping their entire roster. Nice, it says our season, no way, says Octane Tab. So who knows even what's going on anymore? This um, this definitely, well, puts a spatter in the works of what I'm sure a lot of teams were thinking about in Rostermania, and it could cause a cascade of other moves and other rumors that I'm sure I will try and do my best to keep on top of over these coming days. Very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. Really upside the YouTube icon. I know you enjoy this content. I don't people like you may enjoy this content as well. I don't grow the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. Yo, you this SDG is crazy. What? Did you hear what, you hear what Tactical Rap did like when the news dropped? Nah. He was stuck in traffic, so he ditched his card and sprinted home. No, he didn't. He made a video. What's going on, guys? Crazy news out of CDL today. <laughs> I hope you're trolling. Oh, I'm trolling. Okay, I was you about to say. You believe that? You're a gullible dude. I'm gullible. I'm not right. <laughs> I just told you he ditched his car in traffic and sprinted hey, home. You yeah, said, did he I, I don't out? know. Some people are just dedicated. And oh. Some people, you know, some people are just about it.